And then what we'll do is I intend this should be an interactive session. Um, at some point, I'm going to spend the first part kind of going over um, kind of what 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 I did with my assessment plan. Uh, and then we'll we'll have a little bit of an interactive component. Um, and at that point, we'll stop the recording uh, just so that everybody feels more uh, comfortable with participating. There is one more thing I needed to do. Before I start. I'm going to start by introducing myself. Uh, I'm Craig Rapp. I'm the program chair for hospitality restaurant management. Uh, we also have Cheryl Robinson. I'm sure you all know her. Um, so she's going to be my co host. So thank you to her for assisting. And uh, this session is all about uh, kind of what I went through. I've been involved with assessment for quite some time uh, here at the college, probably over 10 years. Um, I was a learning outcomes assessment uh, leader. And when I started, we actually had uh, 12 uh, learning outcomes. So um, this session is about how we went from complex to simple, back to uh, complex and back to simple again. Okay, so in this session, you know, I, I think it's going to be uh, an illustration of how you can connect your own learning outcomes to the course level uh, learning outcomes. And um, in the interactive component, I expect that we'll generate ways, uh, share how I involve students, but hopefully we can learn some other best practices. That's what it's all about. So, uh, like I mentioned, we, we started off with uh, about uh, you know, 12 or more learning outcomes. We had, when I came on board full-time, there was a, an AS in restaurant management and hotel uh, man and tourism and restaurant management. Uh, and there were about four certificates. Uh, so at that time, I think in assessment, there were a lot of people at the college who were looking at a way, how can we consolidate? How can we make them uh, more concise so that we, you know, some might say, well, if you have 12 outcomes, you have to assess 12 outcomes. And that's a pretty hefty task. So we said, how can we have these overarching ones? And these are similar. I think other people have, have utilized ones similar to this, analyze information for decision-making, identify ethical legal responsibility specific to the field, communicate clearly with technical, non-technical audiences. And then of course, uh, industry specific skills. And that would allow, and this idea was about well, we could assess in a capstone course, which was a great idea. So we've simplified these uh, learning outcomes to only four. We only have two degrees. But then what happened is we, um, we kind of uh, changed our degree at the same time that the assessment model changed. And we went from having two degrees, restaurant and one in hotel, to uh, specializations. And that's because of the interdisciplinary nature of the hospitality industry. Um, and we're right here in the hotbed of hospitality. So we wanted to have a pathway for students who were gonna go into event management. Um, we found from the industry that um, there was need to enhance the beverage management training. So we essentially developed uh, four specializations and five technical certificates. And we also have the intent um, uh, next year to roll out a theme park and attractions management. So what happens there with the curriculum is now the single capstone course is not going to be able to capture every single um, student, um, as you know. So it kind of got a little bit complex again, um, because to assess event management, you know, they may not be taking the restaurant and food service class. So we're going to have to assess this last one. Um, insert specialization here, uh, we're going to have to assess that in the event course. Um, and we looked at all of them. So as the leader, I kind of had to come up with a way to do that. And I'm going to talk about, you know, I had to get organized, right? So uh, the first thing I did based on my background, I thought I needed a spreadsheet. Um, I knew I had to kind of map out what courses we were going to use uh, to, to assess these. Um, I thought about, you know, how can we make it easy? You know, for me, assessment is about assessing what we're already doing and not creating anything new. 
um, until of course the reflection stage. And then we wanna go back and um, you know make those improvements. So um, started thinking about the courses and of course the new model um, was about, we're gonna assess in every course now, as opposed to in the past, if you remember, if you've been around a while in the form, you used to be able to kind of choose and we're gonna say, well, this professor is gonna assess and we're gonna make all of our changes based on this one instructor. But um, I wanted to involve all of the faculty and that meant full-time and part-time faculty. And then, uh, so I had to come up with meetings uh, with which once we identified that course, we met and started planning. And I'll show you kind of how we did that. I'm gonna show you each of the tools that I used. Um, so that led to developing an alt course, uh, which is where I kind of housed all of this information. And then, uh, of course, the last is uh, how do we complete the uh, learning outcome assessment template and get that submitted and approved? We are currently set in that uh, assessment cycle now. So to execute, um, I, I've always wanted to utilize um, a common assessment. And um, so I was able to partner um, with Colin and uh, Nicole and uh, come up with um, a way to utilize rubrics. Um, a lot of the assessments we're doing involve projects and through Canvas, we can actually grab um, uh, performance by student and disaggregate the data. You just heard a lot about that in the uh, opening session. Um, in the past, the assessment model would say, hey, are there any underserved populations? Anything that stands out based on, you know, um, demographic data and we could only really look at that on the overall course level now we could look at that on the assignment level if we do it this way so so after meeting with the faculty we're able to uh develop um a shared rubric and um and then those rubrics could then be linked out to the course which then could be linked to the students so and then of course at the end the faculty uh would be involved in that so I'm gonna take you on a quick tour um, on my tools and I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, I'll show you my planning spreadsheet, uh, the curriculum map, um, which I basically just brought in from the past um, and remapped it. I'll show you the uh, assessment template really briefly. Uh, hopefully you guys are all familiar with that. I'll show you the Canvas course that I created and uh, how we developed a common rubric. And then I'm going to give you an example of our formative assessment, which is the big question is a lot of people in the chat earlier were talking about it's student focused and how can, you know, this whole inclusion and diversity is about involving the student and, you know, as an ACC reviewer looking at that was a common discussion with the review teams that, hey, how are we involving the student in the cycle. So I'm just going to show you how I did it and then you guys are going to share how you guys are doing it or thinking about doing it. And this is just my my jumping off point um, to including students. Um, I just thought it was a way. So I'm going to share that. So what I am going to do is um, share, change my screen over. And the first thing I wanted to show you is my spreadsheet. Okay, can you all see this spreadsheet now? Okay, cool. Thank you. So as you can see, um, I started, obviously when I started, this was blank and I put up here all of the uh, specializations and technical certificates. Let me make this larger because I'm sure some people may have a hard time seeing that. And so I started there and then I started listing these program outcomes. And then when we get to this fourth one, it's where you, I knew I was gonna have an A, B, C, uh, D. And then there was also this communicate um, because one of the courses was not in this event degree. These are all the degrees um, here. So here I was able to identify the courses and then I went to uh, our schedule and found who uh, was teaching those things. And then I need to figure out, you know, after meeting with them, what are the, way, what are the uh, related outcomes that uh, we can analyze uh, related to the program level? and what would we assess? And for this, we actually just went to the Kim system. Uh, and these are actually just copied and pasted out of the Kim system. And then I said, well, what's the rubric indicator that we're gonna use? So in some cases, some of the courses already had existing rubrics. Some weren't using a rubric in some, you know, some of the faculty were using the, hey, I just write notes when I graded. So 
we had to come together and meet and discuss those things um, and, and share those, which you'll see in the Canvas course, we were able to get together and share best practices there. Now, uh, the curriculum map, like I said, um, this was from our old one, I copied and pasted. This is, of course, the assessment template that um, I worked in and copied and pasted my, my plan out of. But uh, I mapped, and this is the old thing. We had the introducing, reinforcing, and assessing. And you can see some courses were not assessing at all, depending on the program. And um, what just happened? We just lost the screen share. this again. Okay, you can see it now. So um, I did something that closed it. So we have our curriculum map. And then of course, this plan then get it's. Um, can you guys still see the spreadsheet? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so this is the assessment plan. Now, it does look a little complex, and I had to um, then meet with the faculty. And let me sh now share the Canvas course. OK, so you guys can see this still, right? Can you see my canvas? All right. We can, uh, yeah. All right. So I wanted to make uh, a course that everybody would work in, and I wanted to stand out. So you can see, I always would say when I would meet with people, "Hey, look at the alt course with the um, the street sign." And so I kind of explain, "Hey, this is an area where all of the faculty and all different courses are going to meet." Uh, it explains that this is where they'll be able to share files. Uh, so I set it up with modules. So each of the courses we were assessing in had, um, so for the example with the restaurant uh, class, the restaurant food service management, we're assessing in a students do a business plan and there's two outcomes that they're going to um, assess in. This is the project, back one. Let me use this one as an example. Bear with me. So I'm going to use this as an example. Um, for our beverage class, we were, we are going to assess this beverage, uh, perform hospitality industry, workplace skills related to bar and beverage management. So essentially, I put everything in here that was on that spreadsheet. So when we were, would meet, they knew what was going on. So who's going to assess it? What are the targets, which is also included on my other spreadsheet? And uh, when and the action items. Now, uh, in these courses, uh, you know, we have these common assessments. I'll just show you real quickly, which they are linked in modules. But if I go to the rubrics, you could see, I'll give you any example. And this is a, a, in the uh, culinary class. Um, the students will, um, uh, for their final, do an egg, uh, um, what is it, egg benedict. 
And so this was the rubric that they used in culinary. And all we did was to be able to assess the student level is we added this common um, rubric and it's on the same scales. And this, you could see, it does not assess any points, but what it does is it allows the faculty member to, if they go through and they, you know, three, three, two, they basically look at the overall score out of 100. So if they were to score like 80%, the faculty would then meet the expectation. Now we could look at that student on that course level. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? I know we're going to have time for Q&A at the end. Yeah, we've got about five minutes left. Yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and I'm going to quickly show you the formative assessments. Okay, so this is an example of the formative assessment. So at the end, the students will, um, after they complete this assignment, this gets imported into the, each uh, course and the students are gonna click on this link right here and they will provide very quick feedback. They'll give their student ID and it just asks, how would you rate your ability to and of course the course levels prepare various types of salads, sandwiches and breakfast items and which learning activities helped you achieve this learning objective most and which uh, learning activities were least helpful uh, in meeting this learning objective. So it doesn't take the students any time. Uh, really it would take them maybe five, 10 minutes to give the faculty member feedback. The faculty can set it up as a um, extra credit or a four points assignment. Now, what I'd like to do is if you could, if you share the link in the chat, uh, to go ahead and fill this, take this assessment yourself. I have one that's basically set up for this class. Let me do it and share. Can anybody see my PowerPoint again? We can. So if you need to, so think about this, how can you, I want you to think about how you can involve your students and go ahead and take that survey. 